Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, you guys are going to get to see a bunch of my reptiles eating. However, some of them are not featured in this video, but I still have them, so I will just include their names and species listed below so there's no confusion. Right now, you are seeing my Euromastix Wren eating. This is actually the first time she's ever featured on this channel because she's relatively new to the family. She's been with me for a little over a month. And as such, I feel comfortable sharing her and my Peter's Banded Skink Shukaku, who I got at the same time, uh, relatively soon. So if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you guys will get to see a welcome home video for Shukaku, my Peter's Banded Skink, and Ren, my Euromastix, very soon. So I also wanted to provide a few updates throughout this video as well. I really like doing these like feeding videos plus updates because I think it's a good way to provide you guys with like very boring updates about like the pet room. Well, I don't know if they're boring, but I feel like just sitting there and talking about them would be boring. But you guys get to also see my pets eating at the same time. And if you're not interested in updates, just let me know. And then in the future, I'll just do feeding videos with like music in the background. But anyways, some updates I want to provide are mostly like enclosure builds. So I recently purchased four 18-18-24 zoom head enclosures to upgrade my Crested Geckos. So that's a really exciting upgrade that's happening soon. It's going to take me some time to build those enclosures, get the live plants in them, and then set them up in my bedroom. So it probably won't be a video that you'll see anytime soon. However, just know that that is in the works. I am also upgrading my Lichianus Gecko Rin, who hasn't been featured much on this channel for the simple fact that like, oh my god, she grew so much and I was like, there's no way I feel comfortable putting her on this channel again until I show her in a proper upgrade. She literally is so massive. Like, I'm astounded at the size of her. And I'm really excited to get her this upgrade because she's gotten so big. So she's currently in an 18 by 18 by 36. When I first got her, that 18, 18, 36 was plenty of space. But now she is double or triple easily the size that she was then. I mean, she's big. Like, there's bigger Luciana's geckos, sure. But, like, she's big. Like, I'm always astounded at her. Just, just how big she is. So I need an enclosure that one, I'm not going to have any live plants in it. That's just not going to happen. She has demolished live plants and her poops are like spectacularly ginormous and she always poops on the pothos leaves. And I got to tell you, I'm really tired of trying to scrape her poop off of these like delicate leaves. So yeah, we're not going to go with live plants. But I also am going to go with a bigger size. It's going to be a 2 by 2 by 4 Zen Habitats enclosure. Uh, I'm really excited to try the vertical enclosures. Because right now I have a 4 by 2 by 2 um, for my Bearded Dragons and for uh, Blue Tongue Skink and for my Euromastics. But I'm really excited to try the vertical ones. So that'll be really fun. I'm also going to be giving her UVB and probably a DP projector. Just because she's going to be downstairs where it's a little bit cooler. So she'll just have that set to 80 for a little bit of warmth. Just in case she gets too cold. It's going to be interesting though to see how she reacts to a bigger enclosure. Because she hasn't been in a different enclosure like in a long time. So I'm hoping it doesn't make her like flighty bitey territorial because lychees can do damage and so i'd really like for that not to happen but i am excited about that upgrade i'm still trying to figure out how to do the background and everything but other than that i'm just really excited it won't arrive until like the last week of june though so i probably won't be posting about it online anytime soon but that is something i'm currently working on i'm also currently working on an upgrade from mikasa which is my garter snake who i'd made a video about like a few weeks ago saying how like you know her story basically with Aaron and how I was going to keep her and look for some similar um size and sex garter snakes and unfortunately I have not been able to find any yet however I am working on an upgrade for her because I think she deserves it because Mikasa is not full grown and this is not going to be her full grown enclosure, I'm going to go with something a little bit more simple and inexpensive for the background. That way, if I want to take it out in the future, I can. Or, you know, I'm not wasting too much money on something complex while she is still growing. Also, it's like challenging to keep a really small snake in an enclosure with an intricate background because I really don't want her to lodge herself in the background at all. So I wanted something that had no gaps, that was attractive but also like not super expensive or you know like not something that i would have to be wary of taking out of the enclosure or destroying if i needed to you know so i had this spare exoterra background lying around like the styrofoam ones that come with the uh, exoterra enclosures i recently purchased an exoterra for my fire belly and yellow belly toads 
and I'll include that on the screen up here. I made a polydarium for them and I did not use the background. I made my own background, but because I had that styrofoam and I didn't want to throw it out, you know, that's such a harm to the environment. Like it's so wasteful. I was like, let me see if I can repurpose this, like paint it to look better. So I got a recommendation from my friend Brie about using dry lock a long time ago. Her and Mike, they do really awesome backgrounds. I'll include Mike's channel down below, but they do really awesome backgrounds with dry lock and paint and just like just above and beyond, right? Like gorgeous backgrounds. And so I was like, Brie, will it work if I paint this background with dry lock and uh, uh, non-toxic water-based acrylic paints and she was like yep so that's what I did and it turned out really cool actually it looks like a stone wall I recorded the process a bit so I will make a short video in case any of you would like to repurpose your exoterra backgrounds but it actually turned out really cool and I'm quite happy with it I wish it had been a bit darker of a color but hey you know what it was my first time and that's how you learn so Mikasa will be getting a 29 gallon aquarium with that background and she'll also be getting a bioactive with live plants and she'll also have a stream area. So like my other animals that regularly go into water, which would be Fugaku or my tiger salamander Neville, she will have a stream area. So it's like an active water function or active water feature of the enclosure. So I'm really excited to see how she interacts with that. I've noticed that animals will interact better with water in their enclosure if it's not just sitting in a small bowl. So I'm really excited to see how she does with that. Another enclosure I'm working on right now is actually my rat cage. So recently I got like the random, like, I don't even know how to describe it. I just woke up one morning and I was like, I need to repaint my bedroom. I need to redecorate my bedroom. I need to get rid of stuff. I need to get new stuff. Like all of a sudden, I just woke up one morning and had the desire to decorate my bedroom differently. Just completely redesign my living space. And so that's what I did. The next day I bought paint. The day after that, I painted. Like it was just something I had to get out of me. It was, I, don't, I can't even explain it to you, but I did that and it looks really cool. And... It was really exhausting, to be honest, though, but it was really cool. And the rat cage has a outer space or like galactic type of theme. And I'll include that on the screen up here so that you guys can see it. But it's purple, pink and blue. And that does not match what I have going on in my room now. My room is like a really natural green color. So because my room was blue before it matched and now it doesn't match. So I think what I'm going to have to do is go back to having a naturalistic rat cage with a lot of like greens and browns and a lot of like wood products. So fortunately from the last time I had a naturalistic or like jungle or what was it called? Woodland creatures. That was another theme I had. I have kept all those things and so I'll be able to just reincorporate them into a new design without really having to buy much, which is very nice because I'm tired of spending money on upgrades. Um, you know, that's just part of pet keeping, but it is expensive. And so, yeah, that's probably something I'll be doing at the next cage clean or the following one. Just because when I look at that rat cage now, like literally as soon as I painted my walls and the rats weren't even in there, of course, they were away because I don't want them to be near the paint smell, but the cage was still in there. Um, and then I had to wash all the linens after that. But I remember when I looked at the cage against the green, I was like, oh man, like I'm, I'm not going to like this now because it doesn't match and everything has to kind of like correlate everything has to be similar and so to have like bright blues and greens and pink I'm sorry to have bright blues and purples and pink against the green which is like a really naturalistic green it just it wasn't working so that's what I'm going to do next is probably work on the rat cage they are due for a cleaning so I'll probably take care of that like in the next couple of days in September my rats will be turning two years old so Pip, Ollie, and Alfie are all now in a cage that has half shelves. So before they were in that giant eight foot tall cage and didn't have any half shelves. But now because they're just getting up there in age and you know want to make it a little bit easier on them and make sure nobody falls and gets hurt, there are half shelves or half levels in the cage. So when I redesign it, you guys will see that. And I just figured I'd mention it here. Although I also will be mentioning it in that video. Now along the lines of my rats being older, um, I wanted to begin to warm you guys up to the idea that these are the last rats that I'm going to have for like quite some time. I feel emotionally exhausted with having rats for the simple fact that, you know, you get attached to them and then it feels like such a short time later they're gone. 
And I've kind of just like never really fully recovered from losing all of the ones I've already lost. And so it's just, it feels really like just exhausting to have to have such a beautiful, lovely creature for such a short time. And I've just come to the conclusion that like, I can't dedicate my heart to any more rats at this point in time. And so once I no longer have Pip, Ollie, and Alfie, I'm not going to be keeping rats for like the foreseeable future. Now that doesn't mean forever, but that does mean like, I don't know, for a while. And I'll be keeping the cage just in case, or I'll donate it to a rescue or something like that. But um, the reason I'm bringing this up is because the leopard gecko upgrades, which I've been working on since like February, like pretty actively since February, aren't going to be able to happen until I have a little bit more space and the rat cage takes up quite a bit of space. So when they pass, I will be able to upgrade the Leos with the current space I have. That's If we buy a house, then I'll be able to upgrade them as soon as I want. But um, right now, the housing market is, wow, it's so garbage. So, you know, who knows when that will happen. But with the space that I have right now, once the rats pass away, I will use that space to have a rack for the reptiles in the pet room in my bedroom. And then the pet room will be pretty much all leopard geckos or all, all geckos in general. It'll have my African fat tail geckos, my leopard geckos, and also my white tree frogs, just for the simple fact that their enclosure is so massive. I couldn't possibly fit it anywhere except that room. So yeah, just been working on the plans, making sure I can upgrade as many geckos as possible. And so I have this like dream leopard gecko enclosure that I'll be unveiling shortly. In fact, you'll even see it for a few seconds in this video when I'm feeding my gecko Maraxes. But it's my dream leopard gecko enclosure. It comes from custom reptile habitats and I definitely plan to upgrade a total of 15 of my geckos to these enclosures, maybe a couple more. It just depends on how it goes with the albinos and like UVB. I'm going to give a couple of my albinos that type of enclosure with UVB and see how it goes because albinos are light sensitive, so I'm just not sure. So I wanna experiment with them first, but anyways, a bunch of my geckos will be getting that as an upgrade. And then a lot of the geckos that are currently in all American cages enclosures, they'll be upgraded from their 24 by 18 by 12 to a 36 by 18 by 12. And yeah, I mean, it's just something I'm really looking forward to. Of course, I'm not in any rush for my rats to die. Let's be really clear about that. But I am constantly planning. My brain is never stopping. <laughs> like whenever it comes to planning for animals or anything like that, um, my brain's constantly busy. And so I've been actively planning the leopard gecko upgrade since February. And right now, because I have to wait until the rats pass away, I'm trying to save for them. Because I just calculated the substrate, the lights, and the light fixtures and things like that. I haven't even calculated like the enclosures. It's a very small amount of what I've calculated so far and it's already like $3,000. So right now I'm just in the process of saving and that's like the most annoying part for me because I'm really impatient, but, and I also love spending money, <laughs> but yeah. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's just saving for those upgrades. I'm really, really excited for that opportunity to be able to upgrade them to what I think is like the most gorgeous enclosure on the market. But I will talk about that more on a video that will come out on Friday. So make sure you look for Friday's video. Now, some other things I wanna talk about that are not enclosure related. One of them is it's ovulation season. And I've had two geckos so far lay eggs. Egret has laid a couple clutches. Alisan has laid three clutches. Alisan's first clutch only had one egg, which is super normal for first time layers. And then she laid two more clutches with two eggs each. I think I showed you guys a clip of her eggs in this video. And then Egret is bound to lay more because Egret has laid eggs every season she's been with me. She's laid five clutches, so 10 total eggs every year she's been with me. And I'm like, girl, what are you thinking? Please stop. My enigmas have started to ovulate in particular, uh, Melisandre and uh, Sam and Gilly. Sam and Gilly are at, like the very beginning stages. They're always late when it comes to ovulating. They usually start in like, well, it is June now. So actually this is right about when they'd start, but they're usually late, right? Like a lot of my geckos are done ovulating already. It's just like the ones that have decided to lay eggs are still laying eggs. And then all my, my late bloomers, so to speak, are ovulating. So their enigma syndrome is drastically worse. And like you saw in this video, which I will have included text on the screen, just, you know, so everyone's clear. 
Melisandre, Sam, and Gilly, their enigma syndrome is worse because their bodies are stressed out. And uh, it's just ovulation season. The geckos have skinny tails. They've got weight loss. They're grouchy. They have worse enigma syndrome. They're laying eggs. It's a mess, okay? It's a mess over here. But ovulation season will be coming to an end in like a month or so. And I'm very excited for that. I think I'll only have a couple geckos that last a little bit longer, but I'm just really excited for ovulation season to end because once it does and like all the geckos are putting back weight on, then it's just, it's a lot better. Everybody looks better. I don't have to worry about like what parts of them I show online because people will often ask like, why is that gecko so skinny? And then I'm like a hundred million times I have to answer like, this is what happens with girls every single year. Girl geckos lose weight drastically from ovulation and then put it right back on during the summer. So ovulation season, it is still in swing, but hopefully not for much longer. On another note, this is my gecko Oberyn. He's an African fat cell gecko. He used to be in my bedroom, but I recently moved him to the pet room so that I could link up his UVB with everybody else's. Oberyn did not have UVB before this, so I'm really excited to see how it goes. Like if I see him basking or if I see his little tail tip hanging out, that way he's absorbing UVB that way. But he also got a deep heat projector, and he's kind of like an experiment for me to see how he does with these things. And yeah, I'm just really excited to see, you know, if he has any sort of behavior changes or not. But so far, so good. He's not acting any way negatively. He's just kind of doing the same thing he was doing before when he just had like a heat mat on the outside of his enclosure and no UVB. But we'll have to wait and see. A last thing I want to say is that I posted a care video for my leopard geckos on Friday. It's like the first updated care video I've posted, but I plan to post more updated care videos and care videos for species I haven't made care videos on before in the near future. That's what I want my content to look like. So there'll be less enclosure tours and less enclosure builds as I reach above and beyond care standards and have no more enclosures to work on. So I will be doing more care videos and the next one that you guys can see is a bearded dragon one because that one on a community poll post. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say is that if you haven't seen that video, please go check it out. If you already have, I appreciate you so much. I also have a Patreon that you can check out down below. I'd really appreciate your support there. And I also have a second channel. So if you're interested in that, it is in the description. But that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the notification bell. And with all that said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.